So the question is how our water use is going to change in the future. Um, is there going to be less water or more water available for humans in different places on the planet? And to find that out, people are using water models, hydrological models, to, uh, to simulate the hydrological cycle on Earth, um, depending on the changes in the atmosphere, which come from climate models. There are a lot of groups in the world that actually do this, and they've actually come together to do this modeling, intercomparison, giving data that allows to really make this comparison on, on, a, consistent, on a consistent basis. What we see is that um, these, these models are quite consistent in terms of projecting temperature increase. Of course, there's still uncertainty with, with regard to the spatial patterns and the intensities between the models, but that, um, that focus on temperature actually works quite well. But it's a lot more difficult to look at precipitation patterns and following distributions in water availability in, in the world and in different regions. Therefore, it's quite important to not just pick out one model and then, and then say, ah, okay, these are the changes that we have to expect in that model, but to really look at, at this range and then potentially or assess statistically if the changes that we see between different levels of models in, in, well, in this range of information actually is significant and if we can, if we can see a trend in that. On a global average, um, we don't really see a very strong, a very strong signal in, in one direction. Um, so it, there's not a huge drying trend or, or a wetting trend. But what we see is that there's a change in seasonality and a change um, in intensity, for sure. So, uh, so there's a trend towards um, more extreme precipitation events where, where a lot of precipitation falls in a shorter amount of time. And also, on the other hand, a trend towards um, an increasing period of, of dryness where, where there's um, less rain. And that is at the global level. Uh, one thing that we see very clearly um, is that the Mediterranean region is getting much drier in the future. So um, southern Europe, uh, Africa, north of the Sahara, uh, and a big part of Western Asia, so, so the whole Middle East, all the way to Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, there are very uh, strong changes in, in water availability um, and the water resources are going down in this region. And that's what most of the models show uh, quite clearly. The middle, middle scenario kind of for 1.5 degrees projects about um, a 10% decrease, 9 to 10% decrease in water availability for the, for the larger Mediterranean regions. And that um, almost doubles to about 17% seven, um, at a global warming level of 2 degrees for the Mediterranean region. So that's quite substantial for a region that is really already water stressed and has a lot of problems to, to, to fulfill irrigation demands, for example. Basically, on every continent, there are parts that, that get drier in Australia, uh, parts of China, uh, also southern Africa. Um, and when you look at, uh, at this map and compare it to uh, a map of, of current uh, precipitation patterns and, and um, runoff patterns, uh, you see that these are actually mostly regions which are already dry today. So, uh, so what you see on a global level is really, um, to some degree, uh, uh, an intensification of existing differences in water availability. So the region that, regions that are already dry get drier and the regions that are already receiving quite a lot of uh, rainfall and therefore river uh, runoff, they get even wetter. Increase of precipitation, so, so, so a change is that in those regions um, that are already quite wet under current conditions, so for example Northern America, the Alaskan region and, and Canada, there's um, an increase in water availability projected there. So these high latitudes receive more rainfall in, in the future under um, climate change scenarios. That's what most models say, and that's also what's consistent with the, with the theory of atmospheric dynamics. A little bit of a special case is India, which the majority of models projects will get wetter in the future. But there is uh, a number of models that say it's going to get drier, and India is very hard to um, assess in terms of water availability because the main process that's going on there um, in the hydro hydrological cycle is, is the monsoon. And the monsoon is, um, is a very complex phenomenon in the atmosphere. Um, and so models notoriously have difficulties in simulating that correctly. And it's quite difficult to, to, project, to project extremes like, like floods or droughts 
but these meteorological indicators, like above average precipitation for four or five days, for example, or consecutive dry days, give us indications of the probability or the likelihood that such events might take place, like a prolonged drought or floods.